I'm Sheila Hamilton and we're in the Keep Oregon Well room with LP. I'm kind of a little starstruck because <laughs> I heard your voice uh, the first time about three years ago and I was like, who is this? And then I saw your image and I'm like, it's her! Of course it's her! <laughs> it's so great! Those vo the voice goes together with the face. It does, yeah. yes. Oh. I absolutely do because I, I think you're such an original. And I have been so happy that your music is reaching so many people now. I want to ask you, because there was a time where you were doing a lot of your solo stuff and then you went off to start writing for other people. Did you do that to have kind of a more contemplative time, a more reflecting time on who you were and what you wanted? It was like not um, a bit, yeah, but I mean, you know, it was not altogether a personal choice. It's just like, you know, I had like, I was in the major label system for like three years and uh, I just wrote a, so many songs, like uh, about 140 songs. You know? Wow. And, uh, but it it yielded no fruit, like nothing, nothing came out. So um, I, I knew that I had, could write a lot of songs. And yeah. I was like, uh, you know, um, I just was like, uh, I think I was just like turned off a bit. I had to come back to uh, just, you know, no one telling me like how to look or how to act or how to yeah you know. and you know and it was uh, just a interesting time because I got to come back to uh, enjoying music again and that was nice. When you say that coming back to yourself like kind of that authenticity, mm -hmm. uh, young kids have a hard time finding that finding themselves finding their voice yeah. their thing. You managed I think in a way that's really quite extraordinary to stay true to who you are so early. How and why? Um, I think because ultimately it's not, um, it's not, it doesn't feel right when you're trying to be what someone else wants you to be. Mm -hmm. it, it just feels wrong and I think, you know, I mean that's that's definitely a way to, um, to I think, to depression and things like this because I, I feel like when we're like, you know, we, we have like a really, uh, a really tight view of the world from some people. They think that everybody belongs in either that box or that box. And there's so many boxes you can belong yeah. to that it's like, and people don't tell you that. You know, I think um, I think sometimes our our like social systems, our school systems are all geared toward um, everybody being a certain way. Totally. You know, and again, like just like the small uh, um, amount of divisions that they have are supposed to be for everybody. And, you know, we're seeing there's a lot more. I mean, there's all kinds of, I love that, like, you know, a kid could, you know, be like, I'm not that, I don't want to be called that gender anymore. But right. When seven, you know, and people are like, oh, okay. You know, I mean, right. that did not exist, when, you know, as a kid. And it was, um, you know, you were like, immediately like, hey, you're a tomboy. Oh, thanks. I'm glad, you know, like. Yeah, right, <laughs> Thanks exactly. for telling me what I am. Yeah, you know what right. I mean? I'll just hang out and be a tomboy for you. That, yeah. Thank you for, for allowing me to do that. You know what I mean? You uh, did. Your mom passed before you were able to actually have a conversation with her that you were gay. Mm -hmm. She she likely knew, right, and loved you and accepted I know, that, you. That's been. Uh, I, I feel like I wish I knew that she knew. I'm. You know, I would say I'd be ninety percent sure. Like, you know, like where she would go. Like, oh, I could see that. You know, whereas my brother and my father were like, really? Jeez. I was like, <laughs> are you guys dumb? Like, like, hello. Is anybody home? You know, that's like, hilarious to me. But it's you know par for the course. Like I don't, you know, I don't like, I don't, I didn't care what they thought anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's what I keep coming back to. Like if we can infuse some sense for people in middle school and high school to get that, I don't even know if I want to call it courage. It just feels like it's so real. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, you know, like it's kind of like no apologies. You know, it's like, and I took, I, you know, I say that from a. a place of strength now but it was not easy for me and I and I certainly you know like when I see when I see like myself then and, and I was just like you know I never want to go back there yeah you know but um, but I'm glad I found what I found um, I'm glad I it gives me considerable empathy and compassion for um, a lot more people because I, ha I had to like hide and be a certain way for a certain time you know so I wouldn't have known that if I was just, you know, hey, 
Absolutely. You know. Do you do you have any practices either on the road or in your personal life um, now that you sh could share with people? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm really um, dedicated yoga practitioner, you know, and um, I meditate as well. I sometimes like fall off, you know, but uh, that's something I hope to get like more diligent about because yeah. I feel like it really in really dark times in my life it's helped me a lot. But uh, my yoga practice really helps me. Same. Same. LP, such a delight to meet you. you. Really, really Thanks cool of you to take the Pleasure. time to do this. Thanks.